Good evening, folks. I hope you're well. It is 12.40 a.m. Thursday morning. So, almost time for me to go to bed. <clears throat> and um, I thought I'd do a VR for Gary. Holding in the way. It's reached a thousand subs. That's a great milestone. Congratulations for that. Not easy. When you're first uh, starting off and you're trying to crank up those subs, you hit the first hundred and you think, wow, amazing. And you try to just get it to creep up more and more. You know, you get to the 200, 300, but it gets really tough after that. So achieving a thousand is fantastic. Very, very well done. And uh, here's to your next thousand. So guys, ask the question, which is one of the hardest questions that you could ask in the YTPC. Mm. I'm smoking my Peterson Dracula pot which has a beautiful sound blast. And in it, I'm smoking. I've just opened this jar. I've put this jar away. This is um, McBaron's Vanilla Roll Cake from 2020, I think. From September 2020, so nearly three years. And, um, The thing is with aromatics, you know, you leave them too long and they, their flavors start to change. Um, but with Virginias, Latakias, and things like that, they mature with age and they get sometimes richer, sometimes they get smoother, mellower. I think with this one, it's just a touch smoother and a touch mellower. But still has that great taste of uh, the roll cake. I think without a doubt, the roll cake is the best of the series of vanilla tobaccos by McBaron. You've got the vanilla cream, which is the like the, sh the, the ready rub kind of rough cut kind of tobacco. You had the vanilla flake, which is a traditional small flake. And then you have the roll cake. Roll cakes have always um, been a little bit more expensive because of the extra processes in order to create those uh, coins, those medallions. They actually roll them up like they would a cigar. And they roll them up in long, long cigars of about three foot long. And then they chop them up. So there's quite a process that goes on. They're quite involved in making the roll cakes. The same with the Dunhill Navy rolls. They cost always, here in the UK anyway, they always cost a few pounds more because of that. I just have to plug my power in. So, the question was, your favourite pipe? So like I say, it's a really hard question because depending on, how, on your style of uh, pipe collecting, should I say your style of pipe ownership you know that could change as uh, Ed armchair pipe always says today I'm smoking my favorite pipe and that's the one he happens to be smoking that day and you know whether it's you've recently got a new pipe so for, for the moment that's your favorite pipe or whether you're in the mood for that particular pipe or that particular pipe, depending on what you're smoking, perhaps. So, some people do actually have an absolutely favorite pipe. And they have a house on fire pipe. That means, house is on fire, you can, ch you can save one pipe, which one do you grab and run? Some people will be able to straight away say and identify a pipe. But I think, for a lot of us, it's a much harder question. 
It's a vexed question. So rather than just point to a pipe, I'm gonna dance around a little bit. So first of all, I'm gonna categorize my answer into the genre of tobacco that I smoke in them, because my pipes are definitely split up in that way, and mostly into three categories. I have one category of pipes which is for Virginias and Vapors, with the one exception, I think, and that is for Erin Moore Flake because that is an aromatic, but I will still smoke that in a Virginia pipe. I'll smoke it in an aromatic pipe as well. It's kind of a, a crossover blend in that I'll smoke it in both of those types of pipes. So I have a group of pipes which are dedicated to Virginias and Vapors, and tobaccos of that ilk. I have a, some uh, pipes dedicated to aromatics, such as this one. And I have a group of pipes dedicated to Latakia blends. So I'll start with the Virginias and the Vapors. Um, sorry, excuse me, just a sec. So for Virginians and Vapors, for the vast majority of the time, I'm smoking my own pipes, the LCS pipes. I do have other pipes which are very meaningful to me, and I will, I will, those will always be in my rotation. But they're not necessarily pipes which I would say that I can't do without. So for Virginias, at the moment, the pipes that I'm smoking the most are um, my tadpole, so I'm smoking already golden sliced in that, really beautiful pipe. The thing about this pipe is, um, I think, I'm, trying to, I'm not sure who first made this shape, it may have been Bo Nord, um, I don't know if he called it a tadpole or not, but I saw it, um, I think it was Peter Hedegaard, I'm not sure if it was one of his, I saw it in one of the books that I've got. And that was the shape that inspired me. But it could be that Bone Lord first made it, I don't know. But what's great about this pipe is the shape. Most of the pipes that I have will be either quarter or half bent. Um, but this shape lends itself to what you've got is a really compact form pipe. Very, very well balanced. It's lightweight. It's easy to clench. Um, but it's hidden in a very, very clever little shape. So in reality... Let me say, take a different pipe. Um, let me take, this is the Talamona that I got recently in Italy. It's exactly the same pipe in terms of its drilling, but look how creative the tadpole is. And it also allows for a slightly bigger bend. Um, and uh, I think this is an amazing, amazing shape. It's, it's not just the creative sort of form, which is fantastic, but it also disguises in it, for me, the perfect type of pipe. The perfect bend, the perfect weight, the perfect length. Um, for me, this is that. You take out all of the artistry, you know, the shaping, and just look at those two lines. For me, that's the spot-on shape. So this is certainly one of my favorites for Virginias. My egg is one of my favorites for Ole Golden Slice. My 626, of course, which is the Cauldron, um, is one of my favorites. Um, these are the pipes that I smoke all the golden sliced in all of the time. And then one more, which is the Rosebud, which at the moment is probably my most frequently smoked pipe for all the golden sliced. I go through um, sort of phases where sometimes it'll be the 626, sometimes it'll be the Egg, sometimes it'll be the Tadpole. Before this one, it was the Tadpole for a good while. And I kind of rotate between these four pipes for my Virginia smoking. I smoke other pipes in between, but 
more consistently, it's these four pipes. So if I have to choose um, with the knowledge that I kind of rotate um, all of the time with these four, if I had to, had to, had to choose one, I'd probably go for the tadpole, simply because it's the best shape. It's the best bend out of all of them. If I had to choose it for flavor, it's a toss up between the rosebud and the egg. Um, but I think if I had to choose a pipe, I'd probably go for this for the very fact that it's a great pipe to look at, to look at. It's attractive, it's arty, um, and it's got a great shape and it smokes great. So that I'd probably, if I had to run into the house and grab one pipe for Virginia's, it would be that. Now for um, aromatics. Um, for aromatics, I have three pipes that I smoke the most of. The, mostly for aromatics. I do have others, but the ones that I smoke the most are the Peterson and my shotgun um, shotgun shell egg, I guess you'd call this. It's also an LCS pipe, one of mine. And then finally, the Talamona, which I bought this in Italy when I was there, so it kind of gives me memories of Italy, but and it's got just phenomenal green all around the pipe it's really a very attractive pipe um, however it's taking time to break in so it's not a favorite as a smoker but it's still gets smoked regularly because I'm trying to break it um, so that was that's in the group but it's not my favorite pipe um, and I'm actually gonna go with the Peterson on this occasion which is interestingly enough because I'm not a huge Peterson fan certainly not for bent Peterson straight Petersons yeah sure why not um, so it's not an LCS pipe, but this one smokes very, very well. But I tend to reach for this the most when I'm smoking um, vanilla roll cake. And I think it's probably because um, it's um, the lightest. I'm not actually sure if it is the lightest. This clinches very, very well because of the bend, um, as does this, but it's still not broken in. Um, so I'm going to go for the Peterson Dracula for my aromatic. Being a pot shape, it also lends itself to aromatics and mixtures and things like that. And uh, you know, some people talk about different shaped pipes and why they might be good for flakes or they might be good for uh, different um, styles of cuts of tobacco, but also for different flavored tobaccos or different genres of tobaccos. And for me, the pot is, is lends itself to mixtures and aromatics it's because the pot pipe traditionally has a wider diameter bowl. So it's short and squat, but sometimes you see some people making pot pipes where the bowl is still 19 or 20 mil diameter, but they just have thicker walls and it's more squat. That's not a true pot. It might look like a pot. It might have visual aspects of a pot, but a true pot is, actually has a wider bowl. And because it's got a wider bowl, that means you have a wider ember that's burning, a wider cherry that's burning at any one time. With the mixtures where you've got lots of different tobaccos mixed in, you gain flavor because you're burning much more. You've got a much wider ember burning, so you're burning more of that mixture and you're getting more of that flavor all of the time. Um, so that, that's for me why a pot is good for mixtures or for aromatics, which again is giving you all those flavors of the aromatics. So for aromatics, the Peterson pot. Dracula pop. Now, uh, my final category is Latakia pipes. It's difficult for me to say favorite pipe now because I'm not smoking Latakias very much at all. Um, if you'd have asked me a year or so ago, I would have said straight away um, my Boswell um, Ben Apple. This is one of my first or maybe the first Boswell pipe that I ever bought, and I bought many, many Boswell pipes. Um, I had this converted to 9mm before I started doing that kind of thing myself, and um, it's had a lot of work. It's been a workhorse. You know, the top is already a little bit misshapen because it's, you know, had so much work, so much, so many smokes go through it. 
but um, I smoke mostly Northwoods in this. Occasionally some special Latakia Flake or 1820 Flake or any other um, uh, Latakia based. I, I smoked some McClellan's um, Bulk and Blue the other day. Um, but generally speaking, it's Northwoods and it smokes it fantastically. It really does. It, it smokes any tobacco very, very well. Um, and um, so a year or so ago, I would have definitely said this pipe. But since that time, um, well, it's actually, I would say, maybe three or four years ago, pre-pandemic. You know, you don't think about it in terms of three years, but it's what it is. Pre-pandemic, pre it would have definitely been this pipe. During the course of the pandemic, something interesting happened. This is a, a Fabrizio Natalizia pipe, another bent apple. I actually commissioned this pipe from Fabrizio maybe five years ago, six years ago, um, way before I started making pipes. And again, this was a pipe which I had to get converted to 9mm. And this pipe just wasn't doing it for me. Um, this is a, a pipe which I actually modelled on a pipe which was made for um, for uh, Drop Bear Woodworks, for Glenn. Um, he had it made by Jim Duchesne, um, JD Pipes. Um, don't see much of him these days. I don't know if he still makes pipes or not. Um, he did pop back for a little while, a couple of years ago, but he didn't carry on. So it could be that he's making pipes, you know, commissions and things like that for regular customers, but I don't see him popping up on social media or on YouTube anymore. But he made a glorious bent apple for Glenn. Um, the grain on it was fantastic. It was a bright blonde colored block, and then he contrast stained it. And just, it was, the grain was perfect for an apple. And it was just straight grain all the way around. Um, and I, I fell in love with that pipe. And um, so I asked Fabrizio to make me one like that. And this is what he came up with. So the actual pipe shape and, and design is fantastic. It's spot on. But the grain is just, it's there, but he did a very dark stain. So I guess if I wanted to, I could um, sort of sand it and restain it and do my own sort of contrast stain on it. And it would look a lot, lot more like that pipe, the original pipe that this is modeled on. Um, but I feel that I shouldn't do that because it's not, it's doing a disservice to the maker. Fabrizio, um, I've commissioned a few pipes from him. This is the only one I've got left of his pipes. Um, and he's actually one of the first pipe makers that I saw a carve blast um, from. I think the first pipe maker that I have actually learned of such a concept because I assumed it was um, sandblasted. And when I got the pipe, I could see it was too uniform, it was too consistent. And uh, I realized that it was carved. So um, that's the first person that I actually saw a carved blast with. A carved pipe that looks like a sandblast. And since then I've seen many. And um, um, what I want to do is to do a hybrid of the two at some point when I get my sandblasting up and running at some point. Um, is to do, which I see a lot of pipe makers do, is they will carve it and then sandblast it, so that gives it a much more realistic look. Um, I'm very happy with my carve blast, I've sort of refined it over the years, um, and it really looks fantastic. Um, but a quick blast with a sandblaster will just elevate that look, I think. Um, so I, it's something I do want to do ASAP, but you know, life gets in the way. Um, so anyway, um, I didn't get good smokes out of this pipe. So I had it maybe from, from 2016, 2017, something like that. In the last year or two, something happened and it just changed. And it gives me fantastic, fantastic smokes. Um, it just goes to show that sometimes you, you try to start breaking in a new pipe and it just doesn't go. Um, and those are the pipes which people pass on. Um, and that's great. There's no problem with that because it goes to the next person and either it tastes great to them straight away or they're happy to break it in. Um, so don't feel guilty. If you have a pipe which you don't feel is smoking well, don't feel bad. As long as there's no fault in the pipe, don't feel bad to pass it on to somebody because we all do that. Um, and it actually works very well. I've had people tell me so many times a pipe that I just couldn't get to work for me, just didn't match my palate perhaps. They got the pipe and they said it's their best smoking pipe. So whether it just happens to break in when they get it, or whether it happens to match the tobacco that they're smoking in it, or whether it just matches their palate better than it matched your palate, it's fine. You've got no problem passing a pipe on to somebody else if it doesn't taste right to you. Don't feel bad about that. As I say, as long as there's no flaw in the pipe which you're palming off, um, then don't feel bad. 
Um, so this pipe has been smoking Latakias fantastically well. Um, so the question remains, between these two pipes, which one would it be? And I think that ultimately, if I had to choose one pipe, it would be the Boswell, even though this one is smoking amazingly well. But I think this one has been with me longer. I've smoked it a lot longer. It's given me a lot more service. So um, I'll go with what I know better, although I do know this pipe now. But um, still, this has been with me longer and it has, although I, 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 I've always said that I'm not emotionally attached to my pipes, maybe with one exception with the one that I made when my mom passed away, which is this one. I mean, I didn't include it in my pipes because it's still breaking in, so I can't say whether it's, you know, it might be a favorite pipe on an emotional level, but as I say, I don't generally attach myself emotionally to pipes. Um, so this one does still have, I really wouldn't want to sell this pipe. I've had it that long and it smoked well that long that I just wouldn't want to pass this pipe on. Um, so this will be my Latakia best pipe. So there you go. Um, if the question was pushed to its extreme and they said, out of all of those pipes you've just talked about, still, name one. I don't know if I can. Honestly, I don't know if I can. It would be very hard. It would have to be a Virginia pipe. That, that I can go with because that's what I'm smoking all the time. That might change in the future, but right now, and it has been for a couple of years now, so maybe that's, you know, my codger style. Maybe I've become a codger finally. Yeah, you know, I went through a good few years of chasing all different types of things, different types of pipes, different shapes, different lengths, different weights, um, and the same with tobaccos. And um, I thoroughly enjoyed that those first few years where I learnt about the hobby and um, explored all there was to explore about the hobby. And I'm still only scratching the surface, but um, those I, you know I look back on those years with with fondness. Um, and you know, chasing those unicorn blends and which people get upset about. Oh, they're hyped up. Don't bother. I say the same now. You know, if, don't get lose any sleep over them. But if you enjoy the chase, chase them. I think that's part of the hobby. I think enjoy that. You know, I, I really did. If it upsets you and it frustrates you, then maybe don't do it because you're taking it too much and you're getting stressed over it. But if it doesn't stress you and you actually enjoy the chase and you, you, you know, it's part of your hobby, you're really getting into it, and that's part of your hobby is to chase down difficult-to-get tobaccos, then I would say, yes, go for it. As long as you have the funds for it, go for it. And the same with pipes. You know, it takes a good few years to really get to know your pipes, number one, and also to get to know which type of pipes work for you. Um, I now know which type of pipes work for me. Um, even though I don't always stick to that, I mean, this is a departure because this is a straight pipe. Generally speaking, it's, it's, it's like I said, in a tadpole. For me, it's always these type of shapes. Um, and I think for most people, these are the, probably the most common uh, shape that people smoke. Um, but I still went through a period, like I said before, I had loads of Boswells. I've had loads of um, uh, Soren Refberg pipes, sadly now no longer with us. I still have a couple, but um, I went through a period where um, almost every drop on the Danish pipe shop, going back maybe five, six years ago, nearly always, not every single time, but nearly always, I was buying a pipe in their drop. Um, so I, I don't know how often, don't remember how often they had a, uh, an update of, of you know that uh, grouping on, on the Danish pipe shop, but very often I was buying them. So I would say that I've probably had somewhere between uh, 15 and 20, 25 sort of Refberg pipes. Again, over the years, you refine all of that, and I'm left with just one or two. Um, and I don't actually have one in my regular rotation. Um, Boswell pipes, as I said, um, I had many, many Boswell pipes. I'm left with two or three now, which I um, smoke every so often, but this one, which I smoke more than the others um, when I'm smoking a Latakia blend. Um, I've had a lot of Northern Briars pipes. Um, what else have I had quite a few of? I had a few Fabrizio Natalizia pipes. Um, I've had quite a few Paul Menard pipes. I can't afford them now. His prices have gone up. Um, but uh, he's been a big inspiration to me, even though 
it hasn't been a direct inspiration. Uh, I haven't really interacted. I mean, I've interacted with him plenty. I've exchanged packages back in the day when he was doing uh, YouTube videos. But I mean, in terms of getting when I was st when I started to make pipes, um, I haven't really spoken to him directly, getting advice on how to do this or how to do that. But just watching his output, um, I got inspired mainly. I've said this many times. I got inspired with the, the fade that he used to do and probably still does on his on his smooth pipes where it's dark at the top and it fades down to the, the contrast stain. And I use that a lot. Um, and although I developed how I do it myself, but visually seeing it on his pipes and seeing how attractive it is and how it helps to raise, for instance, how, how to make the rim. If that's stained lighter, it makes it pop because it contrasts with that darkness on the top. Um, so I wanted to do the same thing and I mimicked it and I developed you know, my own particular way of doing it um, but I definitely credit him with inspiring me on that and he's a good guy he's a, he's a great guy he's, he's very happy to share his knowledge um, if on IG mainly nowadays um, he's been doing a series recently of uh, showing some of the processes of what he goes through and he's also just had a, um, a, a time with uh, Silver Grey who's a, a, an American pipe maker um, very nice uh, uh, lady I've uh, spoken with her a few times um, but to have the opportunity to work with another pipe maker is, is just a, a fantastic experience I haven't really had that in any kind of long term kind of uh, apprenticeship or training or anything like that you know let's say to go to a pipe maker and spend a week with them you know you do see a lot of pipe makers do that but I still have had um, time in the uh, Blake Mar Bryce workshop that was very very key in my pipe making very key um, even though I was there for like maybe two hours but it literally moved me on from being uh, an amateur pipe maker to somebody who went ahead and bought a lathe as a result of that meeting um, for the first time and uh, Ian Walker of Northern Bryce has been very helpful to me um, and uh, I've actually just recently commissioned a pipe from him that was to show that I'm still a big fan of his pipes and uh, kind of a way to say thank you as well for his help that he's given me over the years although I've bought many pipes from him it's 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 uh, I've bought pipe, plenty of pipes since I started making pipes but um, the one that stays and is consistently one of my uh, test pipes is the Northern Brides Quebec um, but this one is an interesting uh, shape that I've ordered from him and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing it. I should be getting it in the next few weeks. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. So I've been rambling on for what, 28 minutes now almost. Um, which could have been a one minute video really. Which is your favorite pipe? Could have been a one minute video. Um, I don't think I chose that one pipe in the end. I just rambled on and went off on tangents. Maybe I did say it, I don't know, but I think it would be this pipe. I think I did say it. Anyway, so, after all that, congrats again, Gary. Looking forward to your next thousand, and um, thank you for uh, doing a great goal. Everybody wish you all good luck. The best of British, as they say. And um, I will say, bonne nuit. And I will catch you on the next one.